Hi everyone, I'm Anastasia, your host for Coffee Chat with Anastasia, and I'm so excited that you joined me here. Our next four videos are going to share from our live event at Yankee Dental Congress with key opinion leaders. This was brought to us by Crest and Oral-B. It's meant to do three things. Number one, empower the dental hygienist, because we face the same challenges clinically every day. Number two, it's meant to help us educate our patients in acquiring and maintaining health. And number three, it's meant to engage. So when you see these videos, if there's a question from a certain KOL that you have, comment. We're all here on this same journey. So together, we can take what we learn and make a difference with it. Thank you for joining me. See, hot flash, I just pop. I'm not having a hot flash, but <laughs> let's just place that. Hot news that was on the internet and social media today. I just saw Dentistry IQ has announced that she is editorial director for Pearls for Your Practice and New Products Navigating. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. 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 Well, to be honest, becoming a dental hygienist was probably the most serendipitous and probably the best thing that ever happened to me. I can tell you, I didn't want to be a dental hygienist. I wanted to major in ice hockey in college. <laughs> That's not happening, no. You can do whatever you want after you become a dental hygienist. So I begrudgingly went, and probably the first or second day, I found my calling, I fell in love, and that's really how it happened. How did you, it's not blurring the lines, but you go from prevention and hygiene to restore where it's kind of basic. Like, well, take us along that path. As a dental hygienist practicing in Boston, I was working in a practice that was predominantly prosthodontist. And so, you guys get it, you're same as me, type A, want to do the best that you can for your patients. I went to dental school and I was interested in the restorative aspect of dentistry, but I wanted to do what was best for my patients. And for me, that was to take the time to specialize. Now, you guys all work in private practice for the most part. How many of you work for somebody who likes to redo their work? <laughs> exactly. So in my opinion, I think my being a dental hygienist really makes me a better dentist. And prevention is really the fundamental and forefront of what I do. We won the prestigious award in 2010. It was the Preventative Practice, the Preventative Practice Award. So when we stumbled upon the Adult Preventive Practice of the Year, we figured, wow, this sounds like us. We should apply. So basically we applied. The ABA invited us to present what we do in our practice. We also happened to do a chart review to really validate what we're doing in our practice. And we were fortunate enough to be selected as the winners. So it's really That's wonderful. amazing. I know you have your own fur baby. I do. Um, and can you tell us her name? Her name is Senorita Diente. For those of you who don't speak Spanish, it means this too. Oh, wow. Gotta keep it gentle, right? And it's cute. And you know I'm going to get this. That's a high I've had three huskies. So David, uh, my fiance and I, we just got a 12-week-old Siberian husky. His name is Gibbs, after um, Special Agent Gibbs. Yeah. 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 Right. I certainly do a lot of oral health on this poor dog. So <laughs> give me some secrets. Absolutely. Well, first things first, I brush her teeth every evening. I will admit, I did try my Smart Series 5000 toothbrush on her as <laughs> well. So I can use it on her as long as I don't turn it on. <laughs> I use a manual toothbrush, puppy toothpaste basically, and to be honest, I reached out to Crest Oral B and said, hey, I really wish you'd make Crest Pro Health for dogs. <laughs> it's terrible. Well, there's no toothpaste out there that has the same properties or the same number of ADA seals of approval as Crest Pro Health. I mean, think about it. You have a dog who wants a dog with better breath, no calculus, less gingivitis. Come on, it would be the perfect case. So, it's true. but I need to know the tips. First of all, I need to know how you got the, for her to sit there and brush her teeth because that is a hard thing to do for a pet. It's to actually, I mean, when you agree or do you brush your dog's feet? Let's just. Mine has veneers. 
True story, honest to God truth, we got our dog. As the permanent lower canines were coming in, one third erupted, they were hitting the pallet, my dog has had orthodontics. <laughs> and by the way, I'm in the wrong business and so are all of you. It was two weeks, $2,000. So, and, and it worked out great. <laughs> I'm a registered dental assistant out of Manhattan Beach, California, and I would love to maybe pick your brain a little bit about what other preventative things you do in your practice to um, offer your patients preventive care. I heard you mentioned camera, and that's something that we provide in my practice. What other, what other pearls can I take back home? To be honest with you, I feel it really comes down to risk assessment. You look at the patient as a whole, you assess their risk, starting with their medical history, medications, how they present mentally, whether their situation is stable or getting worse, what type of restorations they're presenting with, because it really comes down to an individualized preventive treatment plan. So dental caries is half the story. We know that we have to be considerate of periodontal disease as well. So usually one is you know, the predominating factor over the other. But basically for me, it's risk assessment. I can't do anything without risk assessment and I can make risk management implementation very easy. And I would thank you for being on that super clean to this. Yes.